The Rogue River in southwestern Oregon is one of the nation's most beloved rivers. It is known for its scenic beauty, world-class whitewater, and internationally renowned salmon and steelhead fishery. It is one of the few remaining salmon strongholds in the Northwest. This magnificent river runs free from the Pacific Ocean upstream for 107 miles, at which point salmon and steelhead migrating upstream encounter their first man-made obstruction, Savage Rapids Dam. Savage Rapids Dam is a 39-foot high, 500-foot long dam constructed across the Rogue River by the Grants Pass Irrigation District in 1921. Its sole function was to divert water for the irrigation district. It did not serve any flood control, water storage, or power generation purpose. State and federal fish management agencies have long considered Savage Rapids Dam the biggest fish killer on the Rogue River. The dam impeded upstream and downstream passage for significant portions of all five runs of salmon and steelhead in the Rogue River, including coho salmon listed as threatened under the Endangered Species Act. The existing dam had two major problems with, well, one with uh, juvenile fish coming downstream and the other with adult fish coming upstream. The juvenile fish downstream were through, were expected to come through as an old screening system, a vertical traveling screen system in front of the powerhouse on the other side. It was an antiquated system. It didn't seal up prob properly. We had juveniles getting behind the screens and into the pumps and being pumped either, either up into the uh, intake canals or being chewed up in the turbines and, and, and discharged downstream. As the juveniles come out and begin their, their out migration through there, they have to tr traverse through a reservoir where they're subject to predation, both bird predation and fish predation. The adult fish coming back up the ladder here because the ladder is so uh, convoluted in their in their track. We had fish actually leaping out of the ladder. One of the problems with the adult ladder is was the ability of the fish to locate that ladder in terms of uh, competing flow coming from the rest of the river. This is especially in the wintertime configuration. The ladder, this ladder, because it has multiple entrances, is not that attractive compared to main flow coming over the dam. So we had a lot of fish delaying and injuring themselves, jumping, looking for the right, uh, uh, the right location, the right route to get up the ladder. Its 1995 environmental statement, the Bureau of Reclamation estimated that with the removal of the dam, the runs of salmon and steelhead would increase by 22% at the dam site, adding $5 million annually to the region's economy. The study also concluded that the diversion function of the dam could be better served by a new pumping plant. Though the case for removing Savage Rapids Dam was compelling, local fears and misconceptions about the impacts of dam removal, coupled with intense social, political, and ideological resistance to the concept of dam removal, made it difficult to arrive at an agreement to remove the dam. After a lengthy political and legal battle, a settlement agreement was finally reached to remove the dam and replace it with a modern pumping facility. The agreement was entered as a consent decree in federal court in August 2001. This agreement would not have been possible without the hard work, dedicated advocacy, and litigation by Waterwatch and other conservation, commercial fishing, and sport fishing industry organizations and individuals, and without state and federal agencies willing to enforce environmental laws. With the consent decree in place, the parties worked cooperatively to get the needed funding and authorizing legislation to install a pumping plant and remove the dam. We formed partnerships with a diverse group of people um, that there was more likely to get the money for uh, the removal of Savage Rapids Dam, which would solve the fish passage issue, and then at the same time uh, give the Grants Pass Irrigation a new pumping plant and would solve our issue of getting the water to the patrons. Having uh, contributed some three million dollars to the site uh, and to this project, we're excited to see the progress and uh, wanted to uh, give Dan an opportunity to talk about his perspective given his experience with this project over the years. Okay, well, again, I'm Dan Thorndike, a member of the OWEB board, and I'm also a, a fairly long time member of the Oregon Water Resource Commission. And we were involved in this project sort of on the uh, 
controversial side, the early stage of, of the issues dealing with the dam and potential removal. And it's just a real pleasure now to be done with that side of it and be involved with the solution side and being able to uh, provide that three million grant, I think was really a key part of getting our federal funding and, and really getting to where we are today, which is gonna be you know, a greatly improved uh, river system here. And I think it's gonna be a great ultimate benefit to the whole region here. Economically, touristically, it'll be, be great. Fish, happy fish. <laughs> and the sun comes out as you're yeah, saying that. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah, exactly. That's great. With strong support from Oregon's congressional delegation, authorizing legislation was passed on December 1st, 2003, authorizing the Bureau of Reclamation to install pumps and remove Savage Rapids Dam. After completing the design and engineering work, the Bureau of Reclamation awarded the contract for pump installation and dam removal to Sladen Construction of State in Oregon. Construction was commenced on the pumping plant on October 11th, 2006. The pumping plant was completed in time for the 2009 irrigation season and work began on dam removal that spring by constructing a coffer dam around the north part of the dam. I've been involved with the project since 1988, uh, so I guess they could say I've probably spent more than half of my federal career working on th this project among others. We'll have once again, the, ri the river will be passable to boaters from the mouth at the Pacific Ocean all the way up to Gold Ray Dam. For me personally, this project uh, stands to where, you know, I built bridges, I built dams, I worked on some really large structures. It's a real unique project to be involved in the restoration of this river and put it back into its native channel, which is going to happen on the 9th. Um, it's going to be something I'm going to have on my resume, but not just my resume. When I'm done and retired, I'll have something to look back on that, that I made a difference in this world. After 88 years, the rogue is running free and salmon and boats can pass unimpeded through the old dam site. The Grants Pass Irrigation District has a modern, state-of-the-art pumping facility to deliver water to its patrons. Next thing that I'm going to do when this dam comes out, I'm going to go into my, in my drift boat with some of my friends and come down from, uh, from Rogue River City and float all the way through this particular area all the way to Grants Pass. We've never been able to do that, you know, since the 1920s. Removal of the dam will dramatically increase salmon and steelhead runs in the Rogue River. It will increase run-of-the-river recreational opportunities. In addition, the district's 800 cubic feet per second power right has been transferred to an in-stream water right with a 1918 priority date. This will protect Rogue River flows into the future. This remarkable river restoration project will help preserve our nation's river heritage for the next generation.